So starting with 7.1, open session call to order, 7.2, Pledge of Allegiance. We have with us today Olivia Sager from Green Tree Elementary. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Olivia. Moving on to 7.3, approval of open session agenda. We need a motion to approve the open session agenda for the April 18th, 2024 board meeting as presented. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. If you'll join me in reading our mission statement, learning today, leading tomorrow. Moving on to item nine, recognition. We have the Timberland Swim State Champion. Timberland High School senior Izzy Ackley added a back-to-back -back swimming state champion title to her resume this season in the 100-yard backstroke. She also broke her own class two record in the 100 back as well as set the school and overall state records. Congratulations, Izzy. We are so proud of you, Izzy. All right, so moving on to item 10, public comments. Uh, the Board of Education has approved the use of an electronic process to sign up for public comment period at our regular scheduled board meetings. Do I really read all this? Yeah? No. Okay, I don't remember reading all that in the past. All right, the board wants to hear from district residents and employees regarding district-related matters. So it has provided a set amount of time for residents and employees of the district to address the board during the public comment period. Individual residents and employees wanting to address the board during this period may do so in accordance with filing policies. Can you read that part too? No? Okay. All right. Well, we are going to start with, I feel like we used to read that. Um, oh my gosh. Ella Schlitzel. Shell Flitzel, thank you very much. Good evening. Is this on? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ella. I'm a fifth grade student at Green Tree Elementary. I want to speak tonight on the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I am currently a Children's Miracle Network 2024 National Ambassador. Last week, I was in Orlando sharing my story and about who we advocating for children like me. As someone with cerebral palsy, I understand the importance of being included and validated for who I am. While my physical body may not move as yours, my mind and heart work the same. I am very thankful for those of you who understand as you can see behind me, I have
have an amazing, so amazing group of people who see me for who I am. I have many friends and teachers who support me and encourage me, despite, despite, despite my difference. They have helped me reach my full potential. Every student, regardless of their difference or background, deserves to feel welcome and included in our school communities. School police or board members should never make kids like me feel unsafe or uncomfortable because of their words and actions. When we create an embrace, an embrace, embrace diversity, and create an inclusive encouragement. Everyone, everyone benefits. We learn from each other, celebrate each other, and build a stronger community together. Thank you. Next speaker, Ashley, is that you? That's me. Okay. Yeah. Mine's on my phone. Hi, I'm Ashley Schaflitzel. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Green Tree Elementary. I am Ella's mom, and I've been in education for approximately the past 17, 18 years, starting when I was in college. Um, I'm here as a parent and an advocate for children with disabilities. You can see we have a small group of people who came here to support us and who are also part of our community. Um, I also was one of the teachers who piloted Wonders, and we were actually very excited to see the DEI and diversity in it. In my 2018-ish years, I don't even know of teaching. This is the first time I've seen a child that looks like mine in a book, and that is huge. Um, before I was, before I had my daughter, I didn't even know what cerebral palsy was, so when they told me the words periventricular leukomalacia, I was lost and I had to Google and it was a really hard time, but we've learned a lot and that is because of our support group. So as an educator, I believe that showing students what people who are different look like matters because then if they're ever in my shoes or in another person's shoes, they'll get it. They won't feel scared. They'll just accept people for who they are. As you can see in all the pictures of my daughter, she's happy. She has kids who are different than her, and she is thriving. She's a fifth grader. She's in her classroom. She does get pulled out for some supports, but that's okay. People need that. I need it sometimes. It is all right. When we promote these things, we make the world a better place, and that's why we're here. We could be angry. We could be upset. We could be sad, but we're going to move forward and hope just to create that small ripple effect. Ella mentioned that last week she was speaking in Orlando. What she didn't mention was that she was speaking to over 2,000 people, doctors, nurses, people who are advocating for Children's Miracle Network, those yellow balloons you see at Walmart. That was her face this summer, last past summer. <laughs> this year it's going to be Dairy Queen. Um, so we're, <laughs> she's excited to see her face. But they talked a lot about the ripple effect, how just one little thing can make a big difference. And I believe so much in Winslow School District that I left another school district, moved my family here, and um, put my children here because I believed in it. And I want to continue that ripple effect. I want to make a difference. We are the biggest, one of the biggest, almost the biggest district in Missouri. Why not be the leading in so many things? Let's do that with diversity. Let's do that with equity. Let's do that with inclusion. Let's make that change. Let's do better. Um, a quote I recently saw said, America's kids are smart and they can do better, but only if our schools can do better. Let's be that district. Let's make that change. I have a whole bunch of people here supporting that are here to support my girl and me, and I'm so thankful for them. We can do it. We need you on board with it. So let's continue to move forward. It's critical that we listen to everybody. We're the voice of inclusion. We want to continue seeing faces and people like her in our curriculum and our books everywhere in our classroom, um, not just Dairy Queen and Walmart, but when we promote diversity, equity, and inclusion, 
we're making the world a better place. And that's why we're here. We're asking for your help as our board and hoping you'll help us do that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, Donald Looney. Good evening. Man, it's going to be tough to follow those two. Um, so I didn't prepare anything because I, I really don't feel like I needed to. Most of what I say, I've been parroting and echoing for the last four years uh, since I started getting involved in school board politics, if you will. Um, you know, our, our nation, our state, and even our city here is in a state of emergency. See, there, there's big dollars at play to defund public education and take those dollars and allow parents to do whatever they will with them. The last year in Wentzville should be a cautionary tale to our community, not just the people in this room, but our community of the horrors that happen when we allow those entities and those agendas to come inside this room as we're presiding over the business of the Wentzville School District. We've seen obstruction, delay, tabling after tabling of good things, whether it's a new facility, whether it's a curriculum, whether it's a, a training for educators who desperately need it, right, desperately need it. You know, we, we are afraid of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, if you ask around, you check the Winsville 411 page, that's the reason why I didn't get elected to the school board in my two runs, because they don't think that Winsville would elect a black man who is a Democrat to any office in this town. But these are things that we desperately need, not just for my own personal ambitions, right, because I'm going to chase those anyway, but for our students, right, their identity, and their emotional well-being is the cornerstone of them being able to get an education. And without that fundamental foundational knowledge, it is going to be tough for educators to get through the kid who walks in the classroom that morning with a bellyache or who had to deal with parents who may not be nice people, right? And now he's got to come to school with all that stress and all that anger and all that depression and frustration and sit in a classroom from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. So when we talk about equipping a teacher to deal with the social and emotional needs of a student, that is solely so they can get down to the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic. And we have to get past the place where we're afraid of those things. They're using these things as tactics and scare tactics to demonize our great school district and our great community. I'm gonna wrap it up saying this, we're losing teachers by droves. As we continue to lose teachers, Classroom sizes will increase. That will directly affect graduation rates. Graduation rates in our district will have an impact on crime in our community. And the crime increasing in our community is going to affect the property values that everybody loves to talk about. And so your property taxes absolutely will decrease because your homes won't be worth anything because you allow folks to come in and dismantle our school district, defund it, and leave it in shambles. That's all I got. Thank you. Next speaker, Chelsea Hull. Moving on to Dale Shaper. Once again, Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come before this board. Read the paper yesterday morning. I've never seen nothing in this school district like this where we paid a million dollars to a person. What does that equal? $400 to each employee. 20 teachers to help with our academics. $50 per student roughly. My numbers may be round a little bit, but they're close. I do not understand this. I, my topic was Board of Education decisions. This is not a social club. 
You're elected by the people as a representative, most importantly for the students in, the, in this district. We have probably in our district a population of 100,000, probably 35,000 individual landowners. Somebody is paying this bill. It is the people of your community that this settlement is going to be paid by at the expense of our employees, of our students. I, I just am appalled that how this was driven. We give a contract extension. Within months, we terminate the contract and pay a full three-year contract. When I sit on this board, I always talked against extended contracts because they are a liability. We found out how much, a million dollars. I, I just, I don't know how to stay calm and present this in a professional way. But remember people, you are elected by the people of this district to provide an education for our students and be responsible for the revenues that you are given by the local taxpayers of this district, which is 60% of our revenue roughly. Once again, I thank you very much. Next speaker, Matt Wade. I just want to point out that I'm here in my personal capacity. I'm not do what I'm saying is not affiliated with Boy Scouts. Uh, just a busy dad and had to go from one thing to the next, back to the other. So, uh, in 2016, my wife and I moved to this area specifically for the school district. We were lucky and found a good house in a good neighborhood in one of the highest rated school districts in the area. In the past, I've been a reluctant supporter of tax increases or bond issues floated for our school district. I'm generally fiscally conservative. My initial sentiment is to always to vote no for tax increases, but I've understood the demands of our growing school district. I've been pleasantly surprised at how it appeared the district has been taking care to be responsible with our money. I laughed out loud the first time that I walked into Prairie View Elementary because it's got the same footprint as Discovery Ridge. What a great way to save money by building multiple schools. We've also been enthusiastic supporters of the various fundraisers at our school. Every year, DRE has a fundraiser that involves a fun run. This year, the school uh, goal was to raise 25K for playground updates. My daughter, with the help of her mother, accounted for over $1,000 of that by herself. This happens every year and is standard for us. My wife is a fantastic salesperson, and she helps my son and daughter to do their best. DRE just finished another fundraiser three weeks ago. Some of the rewards that our kids have gotten for raising so much money are laughable, but it's for a good cause, or so we thought. Imagine my surprise as local media reported the news that Dr. Tormala's departure will also be paying her a $1 million settlement following her sabbatical and immediate resignation. I'm skeptical of the media, so I found the settlement agreement. Sure enough, $1,027,558 due to Dr. Tormala by the end of June. This really puts into perspective my daughter's efforts in calling her grandparents, aunts, uncles, other relatives, and friends, all to raise a measly $1,000. I'm stunned that our schools would regularly hit up kids and their parents for money when apparently we just have a million dollars lying around. And why is such a preposterous figure being paid to a public servant? According to the agreement, in return for settlement of any and all claims against the district or board members, including claims for emotional distress, loss of reputation, humiliation, embarrassment, etc. We, the taxpayers, hire you to be the stewards of tax dollars raised by this district. One definition of steward is a person employed to manage another's property. Another's property. It's not your money, it's all of our money. Yes, I assume all of you pay taxes too. That makes you equal shareholders, but it's not yours to do with as you please. Is it a golden parachute for a friend? Is it a payoff to get rid of a thorn in your side? Or is it covering up misdeeds? I don't know, but any possibility I can come up with is shady. Since the board has decided to use our tax dollars as a personal kitty for waste or payola with no transparency, I'm here to tell you this gross fiscal irresponsibility and maladministration has caused a dramatic shift in my demeanor. I'm disappointed to say that I voted for some of you and I won't make that mistake again. I don't know what happened behind the scene of the, the board to settle with an apparently disgruntled employee for $1 million plus a free vacation and three months of benefits, but this is an outrageous figure and an outrageous misuse of our tax dollars. Since we evidently have such a large financial reserve that we can afford to foolishly squander money, I look forward to voting no to any and all future tax raises or bond issues. My kids will no longer participate in school fundraisers, and I will advise all parents to do the same. 
I look forward to emphatically explaining why the, to anyone that asks. This board has proven itself untrustworthy at responsibly spending our tax dollars, and I'll do what I can to stop the bleeding. Thank you. Next speaker, Amanda Knittel. Hello, today I'm here to discuss the pivotal no notion of new beginnings. I wholeheartedly believe in the power and significance of fresh starts. However, as we collectively move forward, it is imperative that we do not repeat the mistakes of the past. As this newly elected board sets out on its journey, I urge each of you to engage in critical reflection upon the recent years. As you undertake the task of selecting a new superintendent and establishing, establishing goals for our district, please bear in mind that your actions directly shape the direction and culture of our district. The stakeholders of Wentzville School District seek a board that conducts itself with professionalism and integrity in every facet of its duties, whether in public forums, online interactions, or private deliberations. The alarming turnover rates among our staff, spanning from teachers to bus drivers, to administrators and to superintendents, serves as a reminder of the profound impact of your decisions. As taxpayers, we cannot afford to spend another dime because our school board failed to act appropriately. Tonight, I commend the inclusion of a code of ethics discussion on the agenda. However, I implore you, implore you to take a proactive stance by scheduling a first reading of an updated policy as soon as possible. Furthermore, the enactment of a board member conduct policy is imperative. We must establish clear consequences for any breaches of ethical standards. As we move forward in our new beginning, we must uphold ourselves to the highest standards of accountability. In conclusion, it is time to end the divisive behavior in this district. It starts at the top, and I look forward to watching all of you lead by example. No more trolling and name calling online. No more feudal disputes and legal battles. No more reckless dissemination of confidential information. Instead, let's collaborate, assume positive intentions, and approach meetings with open minds, receptive to diverse perspectives. Let this be our new beginning where we unite in our dedication to the success of this district. Thank you. Last speaker, Lee Palich. Hello, good evening. Um, I will be quick. Um, I just wanted to come up and say that I, I think everything does happen for a reason, even a lost election. Um, but I will continue to be here and to listen to our board. Um, it's important, and I wish more people would get involved, uh, but I do see a better turnout as the months have uh, gone along here. I did already email Katie and just wanted to say congratulations on uh, being voted in as board president. Um, tonight is a fresh start for our community and our school district. You seven are a vital part of that. I do have every confidence you will show us that regardless of your views, you can work together for a common goal, which is educating our kids. Uh, lastly, I just wanna say thank you to Jerry Labrat and Brian Bishop for stepping up as superintendents of our district. You've already shown that you're dedicated to the communication uh, with all parents and working together. So thank you. I wish you guys all good luck. Thank you, each of you. That concludes comments. Moving on to item 11, district comments. This is taking the place of superintendent comments. So we have either Jerry, Brian, and or Jerry and Brian, both. All right, guys, we want to take this opportunity just to give you a couple of highlights and pride points for our students over the last um, couple of weeks. So if you will hit the next slide, please. You do have the clicker, Jerry. All right, so we're going to tag team it. So give us a little bit of grace as we kind of figure out how this is all going to work. But I'll start us off. We're very, very excited. Um, this is near and dear to my heart as I was a secondary principal. The WSD had three tremendous honors. We had three students who were named the Missouri Scholars 100. 
That means those seniors were amongst the top 100 seniors in the entire state of Missouri. That's, that's an unbelievable accomplishment. In addition to that, we had four other WSD students who were recognized as honorable mention. So we're very excited for them. We can't wait to bring them up next month and be able to celebrate them. I had the opportunity in our last professional development day to drop into Holt High School and see the Andy Rice Trades event. Um, this was an invite only situation for some of our students who were able to attend on a professional development day and literally build their future. Um, they had one-on-one -on -one interviews um, and interviewing both ways and in interviewing as employees and employers with heating, cooling, drywall, electrical, and more. And they also got hands-on experiences in each of those situations. Um, it's a scholarship event that was hosted again on April 2nd, which was our last PD day awesome opportunity for our students, and we're hopeful that they will um, result in some post-secondary opportunities for them. I figured you want to talk about the traffic light. I do want to talk about the traffic light. Frontier traffic light, I think that's something everybody can cheer about. Um, just the opportunity to have that in. Um, there's There's been some um, really difficult accidents over there over the last probably 15 years and I think it's a great service to our community to have that there. I'm grateful for um, Josh who made sure to push, push and get that project through, the board who supported it, and also um, the grant funding that we're able to have. So I know lots of families are very happy and most of all safe. We had the opportunity to break ground at the Reach and ECC groundbreaking. If you had a chance to be there, it was a fun event. We saw lots of kids there that were unbelievably excited for a new facility. A lot of staff members, parents, it was a great time. Um, we can't wait to see how that, that progresses. And then last but not least, the solar eclipse. Um, you can't forget about the fun stuff. I think um, it was fun to do it again because so many of the kids that were um, little when we first did the solar eclipse in 2017, I believe, didn't remember a lot. And it was fun to see them experience it as secondary students. And then all of the elementary kids seeing it really for the first time that they could remember a memorable event. And um, our staff always does a really good job making sure that it's a teachable moment, it's learning, it's fun, but most of all that it's memorable. Kindergarten registration. If you have not enrolled already and you have a kindergartner, you find a kindergartner that wants to come, please encourage them to get enrolled. We are excited. We are looking at numbers. We're ensuring that we have our staff available. Um, the best thing that you can do is enroll early because we want to have the right number of teachers in place and ensure that we have the best opportunity to hire those very best teachers and get them comfortable for the, before the year started. So if you have not enrolled or you have somebody who's um, not enrolled yet or is trying to make a decision, we absolutely want to welcome your kindergartners and we're excited to do so. So call the building and we will get you started. And our last slide, finance committee meeting. You get the chance to hang out with Rick Angevine for his last finance committee meeting on May 2nd. So I'm sure that's going to be a great time. Last day of school. So all the students out there are going to be really excited to hear this. If approved tonight, the last day of school for all K through 11 students will be May 30th. And if you are a senior, guys, it is May 24th. That's it from us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You're the best. Um, moving on to item 12, consent agenda. Or sorry, uh, let's see. Yep, For approval of consent agenda. We need a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. All in favor, say aye. Oh, no, not roll call. The opposite. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right, moving on to new business. We have 13.1. This is policy 0340, code of ethics. This is a discussion only. Uh, I wanted to give us an opportunity in open session to uh, talk about, or at least have instructions to begin to think about how we would like uh, the code of ethics, if we would like the code of ethics to be changed, I thought it was appropriate that since we have a new board, new two new members, uh, that we have this discussion. Um, also within this, uh, we will schedule a board retreat uh, pretty soon. We need to maybe have a conversation tonight or super soon about getting that on the calendar. Um, we can get the wording to come back for a first read uh, super soon, but um, 
Yes. Anyway, so would anybody like to say anything, if I may? Yep. So for a while, we had it on the board member action items or board action items that we were going to have a meeting dedicated to like just going through different versions of code of ethics, what we liked, what we didn't like. Um, is that what you're saying is going to take place at the retreat still? If that's what we would like the retreat to, so with the retreat, we've always talked about our board goals. I don't even remember what else. Um, I'd have to go back to some of that, but we can include that. Um, like I said, I just wanted this to be on the agenda so we could talk openly about it. If anybody had any, you know, questions, comments, direction, so I have, I have a MSBA sample policy that I was going to bring to the retreat. Uh, or whatever meeting we're doing that in. Um, and it goes through, it's, right now we use the MCE policy model. We've added things of our own. Mm -hmm. um, this one is more governance directive, governance uh, related. Um, and I can pass it around or I can email it to you guys if you want me to. Okay. I, I'd say email it. I mean, it's yeah. it's two pages, so. I don't want to read it off right here. <laughs> no, I think that's appropriate. And is that uh, policy that you're, you're going to share, has that been updated? I mean, what, what's the date on it? 7-23. Okay. So this was updated by Missouri School Board Association last summer. Good. And I think that's kind of when we were looking at it in the first place. I don't know. So yeah, I guess just, you know, everybody kind of look at our current policy, other policies. Um, it's helpful to review policies of other school districts, I think, uh, and see, you know, what we think is appropriate, what is needed. Um, you know, we can definitely, and bring that so not the workshop, not a workshop. We do have a workshop scheduled on Wednesday, May 3rd. We have a placeholder. Uh, we are going to schedule a workshop of some kind for Wednesday, May 3rd. This would be the board retreat that we would bring that back to. And I guess and then even going to um, the public participation by the public, um, the next agenda item. Uh, would we like to change the, just posing some questions, do we want to change how um, public comments, what, how individuals sign up for public comments? Um, definitely not with the desire to be more restrictive, you know, at all, uh, but also, I know that we changed it in our first year to going to the digital sign up, and I think it's, I know it's frustrating for me to watch it, and I know it's frustrating for individuals who have, you know, told me that it fills up in like 11 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, where prior to the digital sign up, it was in person. I think it opened an hour before the meeting, which is, um, and the nature of going digital was also so that admin could see who signed up, what their topic was, and then try to contact them, see if they wanted to resolve anything prior to the meeting. If it opens 24 hours before the meeting, I think it's unreasonable for us to expect that of admin to do all that in 24 hours, especially when we've seen 60 people, you know, sign up, even if it's the same topic, that's just, that's a lot. Uh, so that, that's just the nature of why I put it on here. If anybody has any thoughts. I do. That's okay. Um, and I think too, um, especially being the new board president, um, I'm guessing it would be helpful to have some consensus from the board about, you know, I'm sure there's going to, there will be hot topics. I'm sure that will be covered in the future, but you know, even like giving you that support to maintain 10 and 10 only and 10 always can, you know, I'm just saying that, um, assuming the number would stay the same only because that gives consistency to our community as well. Um, with the, um, you know, fact that constituents can email us um, if they would like to, you know, share their thoughts and, and, you know, if they were number 20 on the list, um, they could still have their thoughts 
recognized and shared. Um, but I don't know. I mean, is that something that you find, you know, like from, from us as a board to be helpful? I will say, and I think I stated this in the last meeting, that my desire is to be consistent and follow the policy. So to me, 10 is 10. I would like number 11, 12, 13, whoever signs up to know that that's the policy I'm going to stick to so they have that expectation. If there were to be a consensus of the board that night to allow 11, 12, 13, if there's a majority vote, that's totally fine. Um, but just so people know that that's the expectation. Now, if we would like to together discuss changes that we would like to make, if we would like to decrease it to five or increase it to 15, whatever, that would you know be a board majority um, vote. Again, why we're you know, open for the discussion. We don't have to make a decision tonight. Again, that can come back to the retreat. President Liza. Madam, is that what it's gonna be? You know how hard that's gonna be for me to keep that straight. straight. So, you know, in, in some of the other public uh, entity meetings, they have a situation where when you sign up, it's a particular subject. And if there's multiple people on the subject, they limit that so that there's more people that can talk about different things. Yeah, I'm not sure how that would work out here, but I, I mean, that's something else that would allow more people because the emotion of whatever the subject is, you know, you can cover it by one person or, or two versus eight or 10 or 20. And I think that would give the, the public a greater opportunity to speak as well on any given month. I just said the only problem with that, I, how do you enforce that? Because somebody's going to put down something and then get up there and talk about whatever they want. So I, I do like the idea of possibly making it back to an in-person sign-up um, rather than being online. I think that would, we know the people are, would be here. We know we're going to stick to 10 generally most of the time. I think that's a good direction. So. Um, if you're not available at 530 on those months where everybody's trying to sign up, who knows what happens next day. If you've got a sick kid, if you're running late, then you're not here. Then I, I, I do think moving it to an in-person sign up for people that are here would be beneficial. That's just my opinion. President, Madam President. <laughs> you may. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, the, the point about how do you, how do you manage that? I mean, it's managed at other entities, so there's definitely a way to do that. So, I'm, I, you know, we got to do the, the the details on that. So, I mean, that's something if it's uh, the will of the board, we, we can reach out to some other entities and see how they're doing that. And I know when I speak at the, the county uh, meetings, you say for or against. And once there's one for four, there's not a second one for. There can only be a second one against, I believe. There, there's some, is it three? Mm -hmm. Okay, I knew that there was a, a limit on there. So, I mean, it's it, it's all what, what we want to do and think it'll help the public. Um, you know, the, the challenge to me with, I, I like the live as well. The challenge now is in, instead of going from your home in the evening to the night before, now you have to be here an hour before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that helps or hurts, but it definitely, puts a crimp on getting here by 5.30 if the sign-up list is like the online list. So I don't I don't know which is best. If I may? Okay, a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> I agree, getting here an hour early was a pain. Um, you typically have to bring your dinner with you and sit there and wait for an hour after you sign up because when there was hot topics, you had to be here at an hour before because it signs up right or it fills up right away. So my thoughts at the time when we were switching over to the electronic process um, was, well, why don't we just, why don't we bump it down to 20 minutes before? I mean, how long does it take 10 people to sign up on a sheet? They can stand in line 20 minutes before or 30 minutes before. Um, so that way they don't have to be here for an hour beforehand. Um, the other one, as far as limiting the number of speakers, I think the policy does state that it's 10 speakers, um, but it, it would be the prerogative of the board if we wanted to go over that and somebody would make a motion. And so we're not talking about changing that. Okay. So the other thing, managing the 
speakers for and against. I wouldn't be opposed to having a for and against number. I mean, because a lot of the times when we've had the hot topics, it's been on a specific topic. So all 45 people were signed up to talk on the same thing. So in situations like that, you know, five, four, five against. If everybody's here to talk about the same thing, that's 10 speakers, five, four, five, five against. And you would have to um, dictate that on your sign-up sheet or your sign-in card or whatever if we do speaker cards, however we decide to go forward. Um, we would be in closed session when all of that would be going on. So it would be kind of like Joni's discretion to sort through that and then hand it over to us. Or, or whoever is down here managing that, yeah. Um, not to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. the other option that we could do is when we have the tax hearings and we have a specific comment section just for the tax hearing, uh, we could have regular public comment and then we can have a s other section of maybe three, four, three against if it's maybe it's a curriculum or it's a policy or something like that. We could have a second section. I guess it would be up to our discretion when we add that second session. Um, but I mean, that's another option to allow for the broader variety of comments. So one of the brainstorming things that I did or thought about was having anything agenda related because people, our public comment section, it's the beginning of the agenda so that they can inform us of how they feel about what we're about to vote on. So having all agenda item comments on the front end of the meeting, 10 speakers, anybody else who wants to just give general board comments, we can move that to the, to the end of the meeting. I think they do that at other districts, yeah. Well, I would say instead of, I mean, we, somebody can, that's a lot of thoughts to gather, you know, to make a motion or to change the policy. Um, why don't we gather our thoughts, maybe rewatch the meeting, take notes about what we just said and bring it to the workshop and re-policy for a first read at the workshop. I think these are all good ideas. Madam President, if I may. Um, throw my two cents in. I kind of like the idea of a hybrid of, for those that can't get here half an hour or so beforehand, but they need to get right on time, give them, you know, have so many that could sign up the night before versus sign up the night of too, like have the option possibly. I don't, I mean, I don't know how logistically you would manage that, but just an idea. I think one of the things is, is we can try it and see if it works. And if it doesn't, I mean, we have the authority to change it. I don't know. I, I don't love, the, you know, the back and forth or whatever, but I think it's important that we find what works for our community. This is an important part of our meetings. Um, so thinking outside the box, finding what works, I think we can try stuff. And I have something I'd like to add. by the public in terms of the agenda item request um, in order to kind of allow you know again not to look to restrict anybody certainly this would look to actually broaden the potential if somebody has an agenda item and like they're on the agenda for that night do you not allow them or I hate to say it like that and like not allow them to speak but like they you know is that it's not fair to the you know, everybody else. Is Pat down here? Since it's an agenda, actual agenda item and not under public comment, how does that? Yeah, so if they're on the resident, if they've requested an item be placed under our policy for resident agenda items, we could include a provision in the public comment section that precludes them from also commenting during public comment, but what you can't do is uh, prohibit a public comment just based on a viewpoint or a topic per se, but if it's a blanket rule applied across the board regardless of what they're trying to uh, discuss in public comment, then it's fine. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, we could talk that through at the workshop, bullet point it and see, or I'm sorry, at the retreat, not the workshop. Um, yeah, yeah, staying within, you know, making sure it's legal, whatever change we make, um, of course, is super important. So, yeah. 
All right. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. So I'll say something. Um, I do agree with Brad, the paper sign up. I don't know why we changed it. I guess looking at why we changed it would help us determine if we're going to keep it electronic or if we're going to do a hybrid or if we're going to go back to paper. Um, I also like the idea of having, you know, a few speakers at the beginning only for agenda items and then at the end, general comments or whatever. If I may. Um, as far as the splitting or the restriction restriction on having public comment along with an agenda item, people sign up for the agenda item requests sometimes a month, three weeks before the agenda comes out, and they may still want to address something that is on the agenda. And I don't know that I don't know that I would support that. Noted. Good point. Um, Anybody else? I think that's good t content to carry in to any sort of retreat or discussion. I mean, it's, uh, you know, got a note of looking for some ideas for signups. I mean, you know, it's, it's wide open. And, and also, this gives an opportunity for the shareholders, the, the parents, the taxpayers, you know, it's we're, we're considering what you think makes the most sense. So, you know, I'd encourage you not to send me 20 emails with the same, you know, the, 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 the standard emails that we get where everybody's sending the same thing. Uh, but uh, it's, it's your chance to provide ideas as well. So I'd look forward to that. Agreed completely. Okay. Anybody else? No, this is going to be the shortest meeting ever. It's a sign of good leadership. Um, oh, geez. All right. So um, moving on to 13.3, we have a first reading, reading, revision and adoption of board policy 2245, transfer students policy 2245. Um, do we have a motion? We don't need a motion for a first reading. Are there any questions or comments about the first read? Okay. Um, then moving on to board action items, uh, we do need to get the retreat on the calendar. Um, typically it's been in, it's, it's May, isn't it? Yeah, but it's on a Saturday, end of May. Um, on a, I, we can, I mean, we can do it. We can do whatever we want. Um. But yeah, looking at the calendar, it's been on a Saturday typically. Um, two years ago, it was all day, like eight to three. Last year, I want to say it was like nine to one or something like that. Um, it is open, of course, so you know anyone can attend. Um, but yeah, I don't know if we want to look at our calendars now or schedule it yeah um president lysak yes i'm not going to be able to define a date until i get home yeah and look at the calendar because yeah. because right so maybe we can email you our dates that were not yeah, available I, yeah. I mean i i can do it yeah, this evening or tomorrow but i i can't commit to a date yet give me Saturday, like, let's look at all the Saturdays in May and maybe not the Saturday before graduation, maybe that second Saturday, as long as that's not Father's Day weekend. Mother's Day, thank you. Yes. No, Father's Day is in June. Mother's Day is in May. So all of May. And then graduation Sunday, June 2nd. So we don't want to do it on Saturday, June 1st. That's Father's Day weekend. June. Yeah. No. Okay. Sorry. Yes. No. Well, if we can't do May, we'd have to push it to June. But we can look at May 1st. Definitely. Agreed. All right. Well, yeah, let's get semi dates for May and then we'll get that going. Saturday. 
Yes, Saturday dates. No, we're going to do this on a Friday night. That's the the first workshop. This is the retreat, yes. Hmm. Okay. Madam President. Yes. Do we have something for the workshop on the first or could we do that as the as the retreat? Just throwing that out there. I will think about that. So doesn't the retreat take like a longer amount of time than a typical workshop? It's been multiple hours. We could probably maybe defluff it a little bit, I guess. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. five to nine on, what do you guys, we've had board meetings go way later. <laughs> yeah, instead of not having a Saturday at all. Okay, if, yeah, admin? think so yeah I'd rather okay. do it during the week in the evening okay Great. all right so then the first Wednesday of May from five to nine that will be our workshop slash retreat and I'll bring cookies all right well uh so board action items we're still on that um, let me open it up and see what, do we have anything, any proposals for policy agendas? Um, President yeah. Wyzak? Yep. I know this is one thing that we talked about um, per, uh, before the new board was sworn in, um, and I would like to continue to do this, but just have MSBA or some organization come and we hold um, a governance type of workshop, we can call it whatever we want, but just kind of laying out the governance, what is our role, how do we fulfill our role, and kind of um, go from there. I would like to do that sooner than later, just because we have a very new board, and just kind of get that laid out. Do we want to, so right now, if we were to do the workshop slash retreat on the first Wednesday, if we wanted to open with some governance, no, uh-uh. I think we're going to need the the full time for the retreat squished into the four hour evening. Um, and I think I watched a virtual MSBA governance training here and it was like two and a half hours. So the June workshop, the first Wednesday in June, do we wanna just go ahead and schedule out? So Tentative. every every first Wednesday of the month is a placeholder for a workshop. And then typically the regular meeting is the third so I wanted to move the governance topic for the first Wednesday in June for that workshop. I think it kind of dep depends on the MSBA. If we go, well, if they're available. Far enough, far enough out that we probably, yeah. yeah. If we want to maybe even try to get a hold of them like tomorrow. I can do yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Um, board action items. Okay, well, there was one other thing that I wanted to, um, I guess, put into practice as the board, um, making sure, of course, this kind of communication would be, you know, allowed, legal, under sunshine, or whatever. Um, I would like for each board member, um, it'll be initiated by Joni, it'll be a Google Doc or Google Sheet or whatever, to compile a list in priority from one to, I don't care if it's 200 things on the list, of what is, you know, the, the topic, the thing. what if it, okay, for me, for example, I've wanted uh, vape monitors in the bathrooms. I've talked about it, you know, just the things, you know, in the middle schools and the high schools. Um, so for me, that might be one of the top things on my list of priorities. That way, we can all see that, not edit each other's, but see each other's. Admin knows what our list of priorities are. If there are five other people who have that on their list of priori priorities as well, we can prioritize that in our meetings. Um, kind of that way we can gather our thoughts, we can gather ideas, we can see, you know, the commonalities, uh, we can maybe anticipate what might be upcoming. So that's just something that I think would be helpful for all of us. So um, as president, that is something I'm going to initiate. Just FYI. All right, anybody else? Any comments? All right, well, hang on, let me go back to the, all right, we, is that it? 
Well, I just said any comments. Anybody want to say anything? Board member comments. No? Nobody? Nobody? All right. So um, we need a motion to adjourn open session and go back into closed. Motion. motion. Oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Ayes have it.